Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome to week six. Week six, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of typography and the evolution of typography. And hopefully at the end of this week, you'll be able to see the typography we practice today is really a culmination of several decades, uh, if not centuries of, um, of typographic design and typographic practice and evolution that kind of follows cultural and social expectations and norms. So it's not just all about uh, the aesthetics of typography, which is what we're going to get into this this week. Now, one of the things I want you to take a look at this week is this presentation. This is the uh, um, typographic history overview. And I just want to pop this open real quick because this is a fantastic lecture. And I really think you guys should take the opportunity to um, to take a look at this because it's it's written very well. It'll open here in a second. Sorry about that. I should have had that open before. But anyways, when it pops open, it's it's pretty complete lecture, and it you may have to take a look at it um, more than once. You know, maybe maybe take, uh, divide it up into three sections or something. But do finish it, okay? Please do. It's really done very very well, and as you can see, the resources are all mags. So you you know the resources are good. You know the right the, the presentation is fantastic. And I think it does a, a wonderful job of introducing this historic overview of typography with the intent of of the viewer understanding that this historic overview is, is is meant for you to see how these typefaces not only were changed and and how they changed the form changed okay so the aesthetic changed but also the expectations of type and from society and that's an important concept guys that's a really important concept that and i and, and i'll repeat that there's a lot of societal expectations on type there's a lot of things that were happening throughout history that changed the the design of type and we'll read about those and it, right through here and the nice thing about this is it's, they're all written in kind of summary format so if you want to delve a little bit deeper the the, the uh, sources are right here and so it's going to be really easy for you to jump in a little bit deeper in terms of uh, uh, researching um, these topics. Um, they're, they're, I find them to be extremely fascinating. I hope you do too. But if you're the kind of student that just wants to kind of leave it at this introductory overview, that's fine too because this overview is written so well that you'll come out of this with a good pre appreciation of exactly what the intent is um, behind this lecture. Okay, so what I want you to pay attention to in this lecture is that, listen, there's a lot of students that and you, 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 there's a point in every design student's career, um, student career, where they start choosing typefaces based on reasoning, good sound reasoning, whether that is based on um, um, history or a, a specific, maybe a specific cultural uh, issue that you're addressing. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that there's a good chance that a lot of design students in their early years pick typefaces based strictly on how they look on the page. Okay, and that's one thing I think I, that I would say that is a main objective of this week is for to get you to understand that we don't, as graphic designers in a professional field, we don't just pick typefaces because they look cool on the page. We pick them because of their historical relevance. We, and I get into that in the announcement over here. This announcement, I talk a little bit about um, uh, this, this evolution of, of typography, of typeface design and, and type usage. And I get into this and I, I talk a little bit about um, studying the history of type, why we study the history of type. And I give this example of um, uh, you designing historic pieces uh, from a specific period and, you know, choosing typefaces accordingly. So in other words, if you're designing a piece that is a period piece from the 1960s, well, you certainly don't want to use typefaces that were designed in the 1990s because the, the historic piece predates the history of the typeface. I hope that makes sense. If not, let me know and I'll see if I can clarify that. But that to me is one of the main objectives of this week is to get you to understand that the, the history behind uh, your type choices. Um, okay, and then we get that that presentation. Just, just please, really, it's it's a treat. It really is. Then you have this. This is a, another assignment. This is the assignment we have. This is type eight presentation. Now, this goes into next week too, um, week six and week seven. And this is a this is your um, 
uh, PowerPoint presentation. And basically what you're going to do here is I'll just I'll just pop that guy open real quick so we can take a quick look at what's due here. Okay, so this is um, your presentation. So you, you have to choose a typeface that was uh, designed after 1970s. This is a typo right here. Uh, uh, the type typeface you chose but predate 1970. That should say must predate, I'm sorry, must not predate 1970. Do not research further back than 1970. Okay, so anything designed, designed before 1970 is, is, is out. A, uh, every choice has to be from 1970 on. Make sure the typeface you choose is from 1970 uh, after 1970. Prepare a PowerPoint presentation you choose. And then the parameters are right here. So you have this week and next week. So what you'll do is this week you'll put it together and then we'll comment on it. And uh, I'll comment on it and then you'll, you'll get your uh, PowerPoint together for final presentation for next week. Okay, so then we have back to the week's expectations and uh, requirements here, type as presenters. Oh, Nobel Peace Prize poster uh, part one. First, that's the first side of the iteration. So we're, what we're doing at this point is we're taking the Nobel Peace Prize, we're breaking it into the front and the back. So we're gonna design the front. Now listen guys, we're just presenting the front tonight. I, um, tonight, we're just presenting the, uh, the front this week. So, you know, a lot of you, I, rec I recommended to design the front and the back at the same time concurrently because it will help with harmony. So I still say that's a really good way to go about this, this project is to design the front and the back at the same time, not, you know, I, I, at the exact same time, but at least having the front open while looking at the back while you're designing the back. So you, you can take visual cues from the front and use them in the back and so on and so forth. So we're dividing this project into two two parts, the front and the back. Okay, so final project, week six final project part three, Nobel uh, Prize poster part one. Um, first iteration is the front side first iteration. Okay, so that's what you'll put in Wednesday for your critique. And that's what will do that'll be due part one and part two. Uh, so so in other words, part two is in the back side. Part two is the final iteration of the front side. Okay. Then the next week in week seven, we'll do the back side. Week eight, we'll put it all together. Okay. So again, you have a couple of different things to do this week. You have your assignment presentation. That's the PowerPoint. That's you're going to start that this week. Then you have the front of the poster. You'll, you'll start your, your first iteration and then the front of the full poster, your final iteration after comment. Critique is the front of the poster, first iteration, and then <laughs> running out of breath. And then we have the discussion Nobel Peace Prize poster. Okay, and if we want to take a quick look at that, and, what, and I just want to close this video by saying I think that a lot of students are really, and I don't, you know, I, you, you know if you're doing this or not, and but there's a lot of students that are just just kicking butt in in discussion board really backing up a lot of what they're saying with research and fact and pointing us to different um uh, resources for further uh research as well as commenting and quoting each other's posts so um what i want you guys to do is just really round this out let's just round out the, the uh the discussion board on a strong note this for this this class with these last two discussion boards okay this this um discussion board all the choices you make in a poster must appropriately express these elements and then describe how you're using the elements mentioned above to visually support the story you are trying to tell about your Nobel laureate each element in your poster must have a justified reason guys don't just like blah through these okay really try to make each one of these make sense okay because these are elements of of design and one of the things that you need to do is train yourself to go through these elements and principles checklists asking yourself does each one make a relevant statement to the the big statement of the the project okay all right guys that's what i have welcome to week six any questions or comments or anything else please let me know all right everyone's doing fantastic again i'm right here any questions comments please let me know thanks guys